Hi students, in today's lecture we will discuss demand and supply theory of labor. This theory helps to determine the wages. But a question arises, what is the wages? According to Marshall, the value which is given for work is called wages. When a person is doing work, the work may be a physical work or a mental work. The amount of money he is getting for his work is known as wages. In other words, the payment of work is called wages. As for this theory, the demand and supply forces are playing an important role to determine the wages. For a better understanding of this theory, first we need to know about the labor market. As we have seen many markets and are similar to other markets, labor market is also having two parties. One is the buyer. The buyer is one who wants to buy a product and by buying, he wants to satisfy his requirements. The other one is a seller. The seller is one who is willing to sell a product and by selling, he wants to gain a profit. The product in labor market is a labor, but who wants to buy a labor? So the buyers in labor market are organizations, industries, companies and entrepreneurs. The demand for a labor. And the seller in labor market is labor himself. He sells his services to the buyers. Let's start with demand for labor. The demand is made from buyer's side and here the buyers are organizations, industries and entrepreneurs. The demand for labor and it depends on the productivity of labor. Higher productive labor is demanded more as compared to lower productive labor. This demand for labor is based on a fact that on the low wages more number of the workers are demanded and on higher wages, less number of the workers are demanded. We understand this fact with the help of a diagram. The diagram shows the demand for labor and on OX axis, we have taken the number of the workers and on OY, the wages. When industries offer OW wages, then the demand, the num o n number of the workers. When they increases the wages from O W to O W one, now they will reduce the demand from O n to O n one. That means on the low wages, the industries demand more number of the workers, and on higher wages, the demand for less number of the workers. Because of this. The demand curve is sloping downward. Now we come to supply of labor. The supply is done by a seller in a market. And in the labor market, labor himself is a seller and supplier. So supply of labor means when a worker is willing and able to do work at given wages, this will be known as supply of labor. When we study supply of labor, we also study the substitution and income effect. The diagram shows the supply of labor. On OX axis, we have taken the number of hours and on OY, the wages. When industries offer OW wages, the demand from the workers to work on OH number of hours. When there is an increase in wages from OW to OW1, there is also an increase in the working hours from OH to OH1. That means increase in the wages impacts the working hours of the workers. On the higher wages, more number of the workers are ready to work. Because of this, the supply curve slopes 
upward to a certain extent due to any substitution effect. Now we understand the substitution effect. An increase in wages will demand for more working hours. And now a worker has two choices, working more or leisure. Now at this stage, if higher wages is given to a worker, it encourages a worker to work more because working more is more attractive as compared to the leisure. So now at this stage, a worker wants to work more and earn more money and he substitute his leisure. Because of this, the supply curve will slow upward to a certain extent. But what happens after a certain extent? As you see in this diagram, that supply curve is sloping upward to a certain point. But after this, it bends backward. Now, due to an income effect, the supply curve starts to bend backward. Now we understand the income effect. So when there is an increase again in the wages, again, it is demanded from the workers to work more. Now again, a worker has two choices, working more and relation. Now at this stage, a worker will think that he has earned enough money for his family. So now at this stage, he wants to work less and enjoy his leisure time. Because of this income effect, now he wants to work less and due to this, you can see in this diagram, the supply curve bends backward. Now finally we come to the determination of wages. According to this demand in supply theory of labor, the demand for labor and supply of labor, we determine the wages. So as for this theory, when the demand and supply both will be equal, where the wages will be determined. On OX axis, we have taken the number of the workers and on OY, the wages. DD is a demand curve and SS is a supply curve. The demand curve intersects supply curve on E point and here E is equilibrium point. And here the wages is OW and the number of the R workers are demanded and supplied are OM. So as per this theory, we determine the wages. Thank you.